Some people commit fornication with it. So they said, since maybe it's in our days, in present day, we say, well, you cannot punish the kokumba. It's the woman that you caught. Right. They brought such woman to Jesus. They said, our Lord says, you should destroy, I mean, we should kill her. That's what they are saying. They said, they said now Moses commanded the Lord that such should be stoned. But what have you said? They just right said in verse 6. They said, this they said, the Bible says, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stood down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. The way the plan is that, see, this woman was caught in this very act. Even though they did not bring the man before Jesus. The Bible says they did it because God knows the heart of every man. Jesus is God. And so he knows what they were thinking in their heart. They came, the Bible says, the Bible says they came tempting him. But he did not understand what they wanted to look, my, my friend, you are wasting our time. This is a woman, this is what our Lord says. What say to you? Just say, okay. You want to hear what I said? If any of you have not committed sin, be the first to strike the first stone. And the Bible says, if you read down to verse 11, the Bible says, one by one they looked at themselves and they left. Then it was left with Jesus and the woman. Jesus Christ now stood up and said, Woman, where are your accusers? Does it mean nobody accused you? The woman said, Nobody. And Jesus Christ says, Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. The ways and the thoughts of God are not yours. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10, I said, He said, The seed cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that you may have life in abundance. The ways of man is to destroy. The ways of man is to execute. The ways of man is to make. The ways of man is to hang. The ways of man is to kill. But the ways of God is to do what? To forgive. The ways of God is to give that person a second chance. The ways of God is to give that person a third chance. The ways of God is to give that person a fourth chance. The ways of God is to give that person a fifth chance, a sixth chance, a seventh chance, a eighth chance. That's what the disciples asked him. How many times will my brother sin against me that I will forgive him? Jesus Christ said, he said they said, is it up to seven times? Jesus Christ said, I am not saying up to seven times. I am saying your brother forgive, your brother sinned against you, but seven times, seven times. Jesus Christ was not saying that they should go and be counting. You sin against me number one, you sin against me number two, because the ways of God are the ways of forgiveness, but the ways of man are the ways of destruction. And that is the manipulation of the devil. My thoughts are not your thoughts. The Bible says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. The reason, the number one reason I always tell people, I said, where people are rejoicing, I reflect. Where people are rejoicing, when you see the rainbow, hey, rainbow, I reflect. I don't rejoice. Because the rainbow is a sign God gave to Noah. He said, I have made it within, I was, I've said it within me. And I'm not going to destroy the world with flood or with water again. I'm not going to clear the whole heart with flood. And so I make a covenant. This covenant I'm making now, I'm going to put a bowl in the sky. When the bowl appears, when it is raining, and the bowl appears, I will remember the covenant I made. And I will no longer destroy the head again. So when rain is falling and you see the bow, that means if the bow did not appear, I don't know if you have reason, you have reflected. No. God gave Noah the listen. He said, when it's raining, my bow will appear. And that rain will not be flawed to destroy the earth because I will not do it again. So when you see the bow in the sky, that means before the bow appeared, God was about to destroy the earth. That rain that you see just pouring gradually, if the bow had not appeared, at that time the bow appeared, 
I reflect. I said, a second before this board appeared, God was about turning the rain into a flood to flood out a complete generation. But the board appeared, God remembered his covenant and said, no, this rain, no, don't go beyond that. Just be pouring, wet the ground, give them water to drink. I'm not going to destroy it. God gives you more than 490 times. That's why you see so many wicked people. They live so long. And then you remind this, our God is Pacha. And you see so good people. They die at 30, they die at 35, at 40, they are dead. You see children dying at the age of 10. You see children dying at the age of 2. And then you say, this God is too Pacha. This God is too Pacha. This man wicked. I have known this man for 40 years. He has been wicked and he has not changed. God has not destroyed him. Why? Because the talks and the ways of God are different from that of a man. They are different from yours. They are different from yours. Don't compare your thoughts. Don't compare your ways with that of God. It does not match. It will not match. If you try to compare it, it will make no sense. And it is when it makes no sense. That is why it is the ways and the thoughts of God. It will make no sense to you. All you need to do is that this is God. Even though people today, in the nation that we are, some people will tell you, I don't believe in this God. I don't believe in him. A woman caught in adultery. Jesus Christ saying to her, And she said, verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, said unto a woman, Where are those that accuse us? Had no man condemned thee? Verse 11 says, She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. I'm telling you today, I thank God for what happened. You know, the the issue of the issue of a boy that was killed some years back in this country. Thank God that the boys' parents are Christians. Yes, those boys that killed the young boy, they were brought to justice. And they said one of them had been released. And what did the parents say? The parents said that. Not that we are willing that they should kill those people or something. I'm just paraphrasing what they said anyway. I'm just paraphrasing. Not that they are willing that this people should die. But they are saying, this, this, this boy that has been released from the prison, they, they should rehabilitate them. They should teach them. They should make them good people. They shouldn't just leave them to the society. They, the parents, they are forgiven them. Even before they were put in prison. They are forgiven them. They killed their son, yes. But the issue is that they are forgiving these boys. Because they want these boys to what? To be good boys. If these boys are good boy, boys tomorrow, if they are good, if they, if they have realized what they have done, if they are told what they have done and what they have done is not good, and they realize it, I'm trying to say, they will change. And through them, many others like them will be what? Will be changed. They will be converted. But if we ignore them, we say, yes, they have punished them, it will not go that way. They said something very very, just I didn't read the paper, I would have read their comment in the paper. I would have read the way they said it, exactly the way they said it. But what, what am I trying to say? They had the heart of forgiveness, even though their own son was killed. Not that he was in a gang. He wasn't in a gang, but he was killed. My ways, the Lord says, are not your ways.